So problem 2-2, two two, PA 2-2, two two is on page 86 of the textbook. Uh, this is kind of a long problem. Uh, we'll see if we can get through this in uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so. Uh, recording transactions in a journal and T-accounts, preparing and interpreting the balance sheet. Deliberate Speed Corporation was incorporated as a private company on June 1 of 2010. The company's accounts included the following uh, accounts and amounts at June 30th of 2010. And so we have a number of accounts with balances listed. Uh, during the month of July, which is the, the following month, the company had the following transactions, and there are transactions A through E uh, listed. Keep it in mind, a transaction is your basic business activity. It's an exchange between two parties, and that's the focus of our work in bookkeeping and accounting, transactions. Each transaction always affects two accounts. It may affect more than two accounts, but it must always be at least two accounts. And so what is required? And we won't uh, read through all of the five requirements. We'll just do one at a time. The first step is to analyze transactions A through E to determine their effects on the accounting equation. And so we'll try to do it uh, using the accounting equation here uh, on our flip our pad. Transaction A issued $4,000 Four, I'm sorry, issued 4,000 shares of stock for $400,000 of cash. And so, first step, the first step would be analyze the transaction, what happened. And basically, the company or the business or the corporation sold stock for cash. Company sold stock for cash. Keep it in mind, stock in a corporation represents uh, equity interest in the business. So what two categories are affected? Well, we got cash, and so cash is an asset, so assets are affected, and we sold stock. Stock represents equity interest, and so owner's equity is affected. How are each of those two categories affected? Well, if we receive cash, that means our asset cash increased. And if we sold stock, which represents equity interest, that means our equity in the business also increased. And so here in the accounting equation, we have general categories, uh, asset liabilities, equities, etc. But when we actually record transactions in the journal, post to the ledger, we are working with uh, subcategories which we call our accounts. But uh, because we're limited in terms of space here, uh, we're just going to show it, show the transactions as affecting the general categories. And so we would add to the asset cash with a plus 400,000 and we would add to owner's equity which for a simple corporation we could initially call contributed capital we could uh, make that our account title for that equity account notice for each transaction, the accounting equation must remain in balance. Left side is equal to right side. We add to cash under assets on the left side. We add to equity, I'm sorry, we add to contributed capital under equity on the right side. Left side is equal to right side. Transaction B, borrowed $90,000 cash from a local bank. Loan payable June 30th, 2012. So it's uh, 
basically a two-year loan. This is July 2010, and the loan is payable June 30th, 2012. So it's a two-year loan. And we borrowed $90,000 cash. Now, if we borrow uh, from a bank, we are receiving cash. The proceeds of the loan are, uh, are going to represent cash when we receive it. And on the other hand, in the other account, the other account that would be affected would be liabilities. Since we are taking out a loan, we are taking on debt and we are increasing our liabilities. So that transaction would be recorded as a plus $90,000 to cash under assets. And the second account affected would be a liability account. And that liability account for a loan, typically uh, part of the loan uh, documentation that the bank will require the borrower to sign uh, will be a note, a promissory note. Um, <clears throat> and basically a promissory note is signed by the borrower where the borrower is basically saying, I promise to pay you back uh, with interest at a certain rate over a certain period of time. So our note that we sign to the bank becomes our liability, which we will call note payable. And so our liabilities are increasing by 90000 And again, a plus 90 on the left side equal to a plus 90 on the right side. We are borrowing uh, by way of a liability, note payable, and we are receiving cash, which is added to our asset payment. Uh, transaction C, bought a factory building. Uh, total price, $182,000. And notice, how are we able to make that purchase? Well, we sold stock, so we received $400,000 cash. And then we also borrowed some money from the bank, another $90,000 cash. So at that point, we have $490,000 sitting in our, in our checking account. We're making a purchase, buying a factory building, $182,000. We're going to pay cash in the amount of $82,000 and sign a three-year note for the balance. So we're making this purchase with a partial cash payment, and the difference, the balance of that purchase amount will be on a uh, three-year note payable. So again, which account categories are affected by this transaction? Well, we are purchasing a um, factory building. A building would be an asset on our accounts. And that amount is 182000 So that's going to be added to the account factory building on the left side of the equation under assets. We are also making a payment of an asset. We are paying cash on this purchase in the amount of uh, $82,000. Therefore, under assets in the cash account, we would be subtracting that amount of $82,000. So here we have two amounts on the left side of the equation. A plus of 182,000 and a minus of 82,000. Now there's a third component to this transaction. So this is a transaction that affects not two but three accounts. And the third component or the third account that is affected is that uh, uh, note payable for the difference between the purchase price of 182 and the cash payment of 82, our note payable is for 100,000, and our note payable, like it was for the loan from the bank, our note payable represents a liability, 
and this liability would be to the seller of the factory building. And again, our transaction remains in balance. This time, we have two amounts in two separate accounts on the left side of the equation, plus 182 and a minus of 82. We put the two together, that's a plus of 100,000. And the amount on the right side of the equation under liabilities is 100,000. So we remain in balance. Each and every transaction as we record it must be in balance. <clears throat> Left side equal to right side. Uh, transaction D, uh, we bought equipment. Uh, and this time we paid cash. And the equipment cost is 200000 So equipment is also an asset of the business. So we're going to add 200000 to uh, e the equipment account under assets. And we will show that we have purchased that equipment with a payment of cash. Cash is an asset, so again, it's going to be over on the left side of the equation under assets. And so we show that cash payment with a minus 200000 Now this one might uh, seem a little tricky at first, but it happens uh, a lot. Notice that on the left side of the equation, we have a plus 200000 and a minus 200,000, we put the two together, we get zero. And we have nothing on the right side of the equation, so we're in balance. Zero equals zero. We're okay. The last transaction, uh, transaction E, purchased supplies on account. So we received credit from our uh, vendors or suppliers. Uh, for supplies that we uh, need to buy uh, in the amount of $30,000. Supplies would be an asset for us. So the supplies account under assets on the left side of the equation, we add two supplies in the amount of $30,000. If we are purchasing on account, that means we're going to receive the supplies now and pay for it later. An amount we owe is a liability. And so we have an account under liabilities to record. And for a short-term liability like that for supplies and uh, other expendables uh, like supplies, generally we work on what's usually a 30-day credit cycle. We call that account, accounts payable, accounts payable. And that would be a liability account. And so we would add to the liability account $30,000. And again, the transaction is in balance, plus 30 to supplies under assets on the left side, plus 30 to accounts payable, on their liabilities on the right side. 30 equals 30. At this point, uh, I'm going to uh, stop the video and continue on in the next, in the next segment.